Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Welcome to VizLib Appy Hour. We have a special episode today featuring Climber and uh, a representative from Baker Tilly. Jan Wilhelm and Jordi, welcome to the show. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. All right. We'll get started with a few things as people kind of start streaming in. Uh, one of the things you guys, we talked about this uh, backstage was, you know, it's Appy Hour. Uh, Jane's in the background, too. So we always have a drink. Um, sometimes it's a fruity juice. It might be a beer. I'm going for coffee today. Just oh, it gets green screened out usually. Ooh, a nice green cup, too. So uh, you have your drinks. Feel free to take sips as you need to. Um, Jane's in the background, but we should really start recording what people drink on the show. We could build a whole app around that, I feel like, <laughs> of just people's nice choices. But uh, Jan Wilhelm, do you want to introduce us to uh, your role at Baker Tilly? Tell us a little bit about Baker Tilly as well for people that won't know and where you're based, all that good stuff. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm Jan Wilhelm van Essen, Senior Manager IT Advisory within Baker Tilly in the Netherlands. Um, Baker Tilly is a traditional accounting firm with also an advisory uh, part, and I'm working for the IT advisory uh, department. And we are helping our customers, external and internal, uh, with data solutions and all kind of IT questions around it. Um, but for now, today, I'm here to uh, tell something about uh, our data solutions, and um, which we are delivering to our internal colleagues, uh, like our financial auditors. Okay. So big financial accountancy. Um, and you guys are in Sweden, but I heard, I've heard Baker Tilly name in many different countries, right? So it's a, it's a gigantic company at the, uh, at the top level, right? Yeah. It's an internal international, uh, firm with, uh, with, um, all kind of offices in all kinds of countries. And I'm based in the Netherlands uh, right mm -hmm. now I'm in uh, Utrecht. Um, and we are serving customers, uh, in the Netherlands, but from the network, uh, all around the globe. Awesome. Nice. Thanks for coming. Uh, and, and Jordi, we've worked together for a number of years, even when I was at Click. Uh, yes, we ran into each other when you were at Climber. So you want to tell us a little bit about your background and yeah, then uh, connect us to how you're working with Baker Tilly as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I work at Climber as a BI manager. I uh, do this now for a couple of years. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, besides, indeed, having uh, to develop Click the Click dashboards with our customers. We also are a partner of Fislib. Uh, we, as Climber, also uh, designed our own uh, extensions a while back. Yes. But now they're all acquired by Fislib. So we have the custom reports and such, and we help customers on literally every day. We help with their with their Fislib uh, objects. So that's going really well. That's also how we know, of course, Baker Tilly. They also develop their click dashboards also for their external, but also internal customers. And they use Fislip and we are the reseller, one of the resellers here in the Netherlands. And we are the reseller then to Big Atili. So that's why, yeah, how Jan Willem and I have known each other. That's interesting. We'll, we'll definitely, I want to touch on that part a little later of the, uh, the external clients that you have too, and maybe where Click and Vizlib help brand things. I don't know if you're doing much around that, but we'll talk about that. Um, so I'm already getting excited. I have questions to ask that we didn't even talk about before. So <laughs> this is live. Um, I guess one of the things I want to start with too, and I'll ask everybody, and that's uh, what's your favorite data visualization chart? If you had, and it can be something wild, crazy, something that you've seen, maybe even you haven't used. Um, we'll go, uh, Jordi, you're looking up into the ether. Yeah. We'll go with you first. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah, I make a lot of them on a daily level, but I think uh, I do love Sankey charts, although I don't even use them that often. Yeah, the, they're so cool in how you can just visualize from where things start and where things are going. Um, yeah, it's just an amazing thing that I yeah want to use on the daily level, but not always. I, I'm maybe often stuck with bar charts and line charts because and also tables because that's what customer wants. <laughs> so you got it. Uh, Jan Wilhelm? Yeah, also the, the Sankey chart. I have an example of that later on today. Um, yes. But yeah, I'm a financial, so uh, the pivot table, it's the most used visualization <laughs> in our department. But uh, yeah, there are several fancy uh, visualizations, but the, 
the key question is, okay, how do I use him so that my end user is recognize the data directly instead of doing all kind of difficult things and other solutions around it. Excellent. Yeah, the uh, people are writing in the comments like the Meco chart, which is oh, one yeah. I, I, I appreciate it and I don't use that much. One, I haven't figured out a great use case. So David, if you want to maybe even explain in the chat, like, do you have an example if you can share a screenshot even? I, I'm not sure if you can share that, but uh, in the in the chat, but I would love to learn more about how you're using Meco charts. For me, um, <laughs> it's funny, I didn't know this. Mine, mine is the sand key as well. So that's a three, <laughs> free, three for three right. for the sand key. Uh, Jane knows that, I talk about sand key all the time. Uh, the second question, and I don't know if I have this one queued up, but it is, you know, you have your favorite chart. What is the, the kind of the default thing? When you open up something from scratch, what's the first visualization, first chart that you put on the screen? That would be a table, I guess. <laughs> Just <laughs> table looking how the data yeah. looks. Yeah. It's, that's like a, a one of one If I don't use like a table, but more a bigger extension would be the climber report or the custom report. That would be, I think, one of the first to just put everything in because it's a bit easier than the table because you can just select your dimensions, select your expressions and slice and dice the data, which makes it a bit easier to just do some you know, random checks that if yeah. you have a normal table or a pivot table, then you have to add it or make a, a conditional formula and that's a bit harder. So for me then, the best extension would be yeah the custom report. It's, uh, it's awesome. One yeah, we're we're in agreement there. Jan Wilhelm, is it a pivot table? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. <laughs> you start, I always yeah, start with that. a with a standard filter box because then I can double click on the mm. uh, on all the fields that I need, and then I can fast mm. enter and then translate it to a table or uh, other visualizations. But I always start with a standard filter box, put it on my whole page, and then enter all the fields I need. Or click view style. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got another CJ. Uh, scatter plots is favorite chart. Rich communication in a small area, and you can technically manipulate it to show other types of charts. Ooh, that's it. Oh, yeah, I've, I've done that uh, before. I don't know if I have it ready, but I did like a an ice hockey rink. And I put right, the players as the dots and move them around. It's, it's scatter plot, but it's also like a very specific sports visualization. Um, oh, this is for the Meco chart. David is saying you want to see the spend by time and location. And each location contributes overall. Um, and you tend to flatten this stuff out, maybe see big pockets of things. Oh, yeah. Good idea. Yeah. I need to use that more often. Um, yeah. So things will continue to pop in. Um, Maybe uh, give us something else to chat about there. But yeah, I agree. I I start with, I've, I've gone back and forth based on these episodes of what do I put on the screen first? It's normally I want to know the data. So a table is like, that's how I can see the shape of some of that. Um, Alexis likes the tree map there. I, I've i tried starting directly with the sand key, but you really have to know the data, right? That's, yeah. <laughs> Those are interesting, Young, where I'm like, I maybe I take that for granted that you can just search for anything and click and start seeing the associations and then build from that. Is that kind of how you're doing it? Like, oh, I'm going to select this region or this department and then see these things. And that leads you down what chart you build next. Mm, no, I, I think it depends on the question I need to answer. Mm. Okay. Where do I start and where do I go to? So you don't even need other charts. You're just answer, or you know, asking questions with all of the data that's there. Yeah. Just with filters. That's that, that stuff I learned like first few days at Click. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I haven't used that in a while. Oh. Huge fans of sand keys, Pareto charts, um, Pareto. KPIs. Pareto a good one. Always the first step for for Adam here is put a big KPI on the screen. Let let you know yeah. what you're looking at. Ah, yeah. like the idea. I feel like you have to know a lot about the data to do that, though, right? First, if you're the custom reports, interesting because you could, um, and I, I don't know if any of you want to show anything too, but uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. If you do have a custom report, there might be people that don't know what that is. 
Um, so yeah, we'll show that. But before, I want to remind people, we just started doing this last week, and that is we're going to do a couple of giveaways during the episode. And so uh, if you type into the chat, whether you're watching this on LinkedIn or uh, YouTube, type in hashtag Baker Tilly, and it'll enter you into a drawing. About halfway through, uh, we'll do a drawing for the first winner. And uh, it might be a VizLib box. I'll show you our merchandise page. And then towards the end, we'll do another drawing. And Climber has graciously offered to, to ship a gift as well. Uh, don't worry. We'll figure out the logistics of how to get it to you wherever you are in the world. Um, and we'll help out with that. We're, we're pros at shipping stuff from, from and to every country at this point. But use Baker Tilly throughout. Uh, it'll automatically enter you in. I see the number of entries is going up. So that's great. We know it's working. And a quick preview. Uh, I think this is the first time it's been shown publicly, but we have a store. We not only make data visualization extensions, we also make uh, shirts, mugs, and socks. I know these are super popular. Is so, this the tiles object? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I didn't build it, so I would have <laughs> used tiles. It's actually a good one. <laughs> Uh, it's a Shopify page, so I think it's probably just images. Oh. Um, but we'll give you a voucher. One of the giveaways will be a voucher to go on a miniature shopping spree on the Vizlib store. Um, so we'll save that. There's some good stuff out here. Uh, Vizlib employees usually get good crack at this stuff. So I can say I'm a big fan of the socks. High quality. Although I haven't been to many conferences lately. So I'm uh, honestly, I'm, I'm barefoot right now is how I work from home. So maybe you didn't need to know that. Uh, but keep entering. Uh, we'll bring that back up at different points in time. I'll remove that from the screen. And uh, you know, we'll get into the like the meat of it. So a couple of the things it would be be good to understand, Jan Wilhelm and, and Yori, how you guys work together and what were some of the the big challenges that you guys threw click at and um you know, saw some some really good insights being shared. This was a mind shift. We changed our business. And then how, did you use VizLib later on to take it to the next level to push with adoption? Like, what's that journey like for you guys, Ben? Yeah, I think that um, <laughs> we've used ClickView. And in ClickView, you can see all your sheets, for example. You can do a horizontal selection bar. And that's where it started with the horizontal selection bar from Climber. Wow. Uh, Climber okay. has built that extension yeah. and we have used that a lot. And um, when a Climber was taken over by Vislib, um, we saw that there were much more extensions that we can use because we uh, have a data factory. That's how we call ClickSense and all mm -hmm. the stuff around it. Uh, and we are processing uh, more than 1500 apps through the year. Um, my fin financial colleagues need to uh, see in one, one second, okay, the data which I want to use, is it correct, is it useful, which selections can I make, all that kind of stuff. And standard with click, yeah, you can see a lot, you can do a lot, but with Vislip you can make it a lot easier, like the menu bar uh, you can use, like the Sankey chart, like the KPIs, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And that was the moment that I contacted Climber. Okay, you're in the Netherlands. Um, please help us um, with all those different extensions. So you guys have been using it for a while then, even when it was potentially when it was Climber extensions. Yeah. yeah and I then think since that's what I was using. Year, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I was using it at Click uh, as well, you know, out in the field, like I need to show something a little different and customer report was definitely out there. And because I started on ClickView, I knew I wanted buttons along the top for selections and not just a drop down filter box. Yeah. And so, yeah, horizontal selection bar as well was one that I started baking into everything because it was what you could guide people through something and they they don't have to go hunt for you know, the name of the month that you're always going to use or the years um, that are really common ones. That's funny that that's, that's the one that you guys kind of started with. Yeah. Is that because you came from, from ClickView or was there another BI product that was kind no, of from ClickView. Click? Okay. Yeah, no, from ClickView. The users were used to work with ClickView. So with the horizontal selection option, 
and yeah. my developers when the switch go from click view to click sense was there my developers said okay that's yeah we get a lot of questions okay where do i need to do the selection based on the year or the period or whatever yep and they said okay we find an extension and can we use that and at that time i was very enthusiastic about the extension but not about the whole extension idea because when mm -hmm. Columbus says, okay, we don't develop the extension anymore, then we have a problem. And if I have done more than thousands apps with that extension in it, then I have a huge problem. Yeah. So that that's one of the things I'm happy that it is by Climber, by Vislib right now. So I need, I, I know that it's always supported. And if there is any issue, I can call Jordi or the team from Climber okay, I have a problem right now. And they know that we need to uh, have support right away. And that's one of the kind of things I um, I love about uh, uh, yeah. about the relationship between uh, Bakertelli and Climber and, and Firstlip, of course. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, yeah. It's funny, Martin is in the chat, Martin Mahler, <laughs> CEO of Vislib, um, you know, obviously is very close to Climber as well and was part of the acquisition of the technology side. And uh, I'm not sure if people know, but in, in Sweden, right, the Climber office is also where the Vislib office is kind of contained. You guys are, I don't know yeah. how close you are, if you can throw something and hit Michael when you're in the office. Um, sure. I haven't been there uh, for many years. And I think at that point, I don't even know if it was called Vislib at Climber. Um, but there's a really close relationship we guys have. Um, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> you guys yeah. have been around for a while. On the, uh, uh, do you have anything, Jan and Wilhelm, that you wanted to share too? Um, we try to show stuff visual where we can on Appy Hour. Yeah. I know. Um, I, can, I can share my screen to, to show okay. uh, one example which we have built um, with the, 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 the Vislib extensions. Um, get that banner out of the way. Yeah. And then let me know when you're ready and I'll. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm ready. There we go. I cannot see my screen anymore. I only see ClickSense right now. Yes, we see um, Baker Tilly yeah, we see uh, with like a, a greenish yeah. bar at the top and thumbs up and a yeah. really bad thumbs down. But I don't. And, and those are all KPIs, Vislib uh, visualizations. Oh. And you see uh, the thumbs up and the thumbs down are really easy to read for uh, my colleagues. Um, and you also see direct the, the menu bar on top mm -hmm. uh, where you can search all around all the sheets that are in there. Um, I don't know if my connection is working properly, but um, yeah, here my colleagues can see right away what is happening with the data, um, what is in the data, is the data uh, good or do, do I need some action uh, to do? So that's yeah, the first visualization uh, which is in there. And, my and do people is... check this like this is just they have it open, it's a tab, they look at this and this is changing every so often. Like, do you have this refresh regularly that it's pretty actionable? No, this, in this case, it's a financial data used for the financial audit. So we ah. retrieve the data once a year. Oh, okay. uh, and my colleagues can easily see, okay, can I use the data? What is the data quality ah, uh, okay. from the data I received? So that, that I have a thumbs for. So in this case, a transaction on more than one period or a journal no there are there aren't but uh, some transactions are not equal so that's why the thumbs down and i can click on it and can go to the transactions that are not uh, um, uh, equal so that i can analyze and i will go to another sheet but my connection is not working probably because i cannot click on anything yeah we see we're not moving but uh, uh understandable yeah. i mean this helps frame it up so you guys you will brand all of your apps i imagine using the sheet menu at the top yeah and you i see it just in the url too you call it the data factory so that's is that your you've renamed click sense effectively to the data factory and that's how people know it no people know that it is click sense because they are starting in the hub and then mm. they can find their own uh, dashboard right there and then they go into this and they see the the, uh, the logo on top because we can also give customers access to the dashboards to analyze their own data 
Yeah. Um, but okay. normally, um, yeah, you can uh, see the data for your own uh, appointment. So if I understand it correctly, your your teams will go out there, they run uh, an extensive audit of an organization. Um, then the data factory team back, back at Baker Tilly organizes it, arranges it, puts it into an application that the customer then, the client can go back and see how did we do on our audit? Where are the areas we need to look into? Um, so you're feeding back this information through uh, an interactive ClickSense application. Yeah, and it's fully automated. So uh, wow. my financial audit colleagues upload the audit file, so the data into a portal and then ClickSense on the back end with all the API possibilities, uh, processing and generating uh, this dashboard based on the template uh, with the on-demand app generation. So that's why we can yeah. Ooh, uh, that's cool. do all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's Jordi, nice. do you have, are your fingerprints all over this app? Like, did you pick the thumbs up, thumbs down type of case? No, no, no. So, <laughs> Jan Willem, they're pros to themselves. So, they develop their applications also in house. So, we, for this part, we only deliver like the software from Fizzlip. So, ah, we make okay. sure that they can, uh, can work with it. If they have any questions or there are any bugs or anything needs to be reported, we communicate back with Fizzlip. Uh, but Jan Willem and his team, they are doing all the development work. And of course, we also have yeah, skills in-house. So if they have any questions, they could also uh, parlay with us. And that's always possible. But no, I haven't done anything to this. Uh, <laughs> but I was wondering, uh, what kind of extensions did you use from? Uh, because I do see the sheet menu, of course, on top for the people that maybe don't know all the FISLIP extensions. So with the sheet menu, you did the rebranding, right? Yep. And is it the KPI object itself or is it the KPI design that you used for the thumbs ups and thumbs down? No, it's a KPI object itself. And uh, I don't know why I cannot, cannot not access the analysis, but uh, there are the pivot table uh, from Vislip. And that the reason why we are using the pivot table is because you can uh, move over with your mouse and then it's highlighted the line which are you're in. So if you have a huge pivot table, then you can easily see all the figures that are belonging to that uh, specific line. Yeah. Um, also, the sort order for the pivot table, it's really easy to use. You can just click on it and then the sorting will be different. Yeah. Um, the Sankey chart, um, for example, we are using. And yeah. maybe uh, we'll, if you're able to show it, I'll remove uh, that stream. If you refresh your browser, yeah. maybe, um, yeah. and I see was... if it comes back. Sometimes it does that. Uh, Chrome yeah. always has some fun because we're the stream actually takes up a good amount of resources yeah. on the computer. Yeah, if you can share my screen again. Ah, voila. Ah, All right, cool. yeah. Then you can see the Sankey chart and the menu is working. So ah, see. I don't know what's happening. But in this case, my financial colleagues do want to know, okay, what are the costs and where it's coming from? And normally you have to select uh, the general ledger type and then see the journal type etc and in this case by one click i can see it and now it's two dimensions but we also have for our sap colleagues we have three four five uh, dimensions which you can use and you uh, just by clicking on it we are discovering the data and yeah. yeah that's for us and for my financial colleagues it's very easy to use uh, just clicking around making some print screens, telling them the selections they have used. And then, yeah, they are ready to use it in their audit file. Um, Do so you this... need a lot of training? If you no. have like new, probably you have new users uh, coming and going, of course, uh, because they switched uh, jobs or get uh, from a different department. Yeah. Are they quickly used to using this or? No, they are really, it's really easy to use yeah, you need to okay, what I'm looking through, but in most cases, they are knowing the customer, they are knowing the, uh, the data. So they are, can really easy use ClickSense uh, for their uh, work. Oh, yeah, cool. two questions. I mean, that yeah. the scan key for one is somewhat of an advanced chart. So I, you know, there was a question earlier, like, hey, do you have t-shirts with the sand key? Um, <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Like it's a cool looking visualization, but it's uh, it's one where you have to interact with it. I think to get the value out, you want to see the flows, you want to click on those things. So it's only useful when you're interacting with it. 
And uh, and then Martin says in the second one of that top menu, you know, how important is it that people know and are familiar with this? And I, I imagine when you send this off to a new client, you're teaching them how to step through the audit application and review their data um, versus here's just a drop down and, you know, go to the 30 second sheet. You've developed that menu intentionally for people, right? Like, yeah, it's something we have built out uh, step by step. Uh, and, and nowadays we just send it out. And if they are coming in through the dashboard, they already know, okay, this is where I need, need to be to navigate through the application. Yeah. And we don't have give them a manual or whatever. They're just finding out by themselves. Uh, for people who know ClickSense saying to me, okay, where is my sheet manual here on the top? We said, no, yeah. we hide it because we don't want you to use that. Um, also, because all of those sheets I now navigate through. Oh, you clicked on that thumbs up and it yeah. takes you to the detail. And oh. this sheet is hide it. So and normally I cannot go to that sheet through the menu. I just only can access the sheet by clicking on the thumbs up. Mm, okay. And that normally I cannot do that uh in an easy way and now i just taking that sheet up in the menu and then it, it isn't there for the user yeah perfect yeah, good opportunity so do you have are you guys um getting assistant do you or do you have this is different to me than um you know uh an analytic a bi analyst creating an app this is this is app design there's user experience i imagine you've you've baked into this now you want them to click these things like buttons. You have specific people that have those skills or nope. um, did you just like grow this over time? Like this is just, it's better if we do it this way and you've built this UX kind of flow to things. Yeah, we started with uh, um, a question mark or a cross if it wasn't fine. And <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, we said, okay, we can build a very nice application. So we tried thumbs up, thumbs down with the color and uh, ask some colleagues, okay, do you know what we mean if we do this or that? Uh, and that's why we are built this uh, visualization right now. Wonderful. Uh, let's see, we're really close to halfway through and I wanted to remind people um, to enter Baker Tilly into the chat so we can do the giveaway uh, in a little bit and then towards the end too. But I wanna take some questions too um, from the audience, you know, the, the financial data side of ClickSense, um, it, it's, it's huge in the industry. Um, when I was at Click, you know, that was one of the largest industries was the finance and accounting and insurance sectors. And so you mentioned the pivot tables. Um, are you guys just, are you still, people want to export to Excel because it's still comfortable? Or have you been able to move people over? Uh, and I think a question here from Yama was just around the sand key chart. It's not good if you want to print it, but it's great to interact. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll turn those off. Um, it's, you know, do you still have people wanting to export to Excel because of comfort? Uh, yeah, they uh, need to export it to Excel for their file, for their audit file. Okay. Uh, but uh, in most cases, we said to our, our colleagues, okay, you only need to export the information you need. So please don't go to the detail sheet, click right click and export <laughs> all. No, just go to the financial overview, just pick the number you want. Yeah. Um, or just go to uh, another pivot table and just click on this general ledger account and only export the information from that. Uh, that line and not from all the other uh, information very interesting yeah i know what will we'll, we'll never get away from it uh, people wanting to get to excel but it's that if you've gotten them comfortable and then maybe they're gravitating more to this i don't need that except for bookkeeping storage purposes i will interact with it here get to that slice i need and then do something with it uh, perfect well let's uh let's remind people very important for a company. Uh, oh, Melissa's in here. Uh -huh. We will not create new applications without this. And I don't know if she's referencing the sheet menu at the top for guiding people or 
a pivot table? I guess she is. I Maybe guess she's referring to the sheet menu also. I've seen one of her apps indeed. Yeah. Yeah. I make heavily use of this. Well, uh, if Melissa's, yeah, it's still there. I'm not sure what you were referencing there, but um, it might be that top level thing that Martin mentioned earlier, the, the yeah. sheet menu. Perfect. So let's, uh, I'll just take your screen out real quick here and swap yeah. back over. So remember, you can type in Baker Tilly. I'll give everybody um, five to 10 more seconds to type it in. And uh, we have a good amount of people already. There's 27 of you. If you haven't typed in Baker Tilly, um, you can't compete in this first drawing. So put your name in, just type hashtag Baker Tilly. And I'll see if we get one more person. It, there is a, like a there's a delay in LinkedIn, so I have to give a little bit of time just to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no problem. All right, are we gonna get one more? I'll type in just to show you that it is live. Um, so I'm in the LinkedIn session. I'm not eligible. There's young oh, one. Let's one. go in there. Mine failed to post. Oh, okay, we got some more in. So let's hit it. Oh, nice. uh, we're gonna say that. Uh, Climber and Vizlib employees are not eligible, but Baker Tilly employees are good. Yeah, they could win. <laughs> yeah, I think they are. Here. They are. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, I see more coming in. Um, Anders is here. It looks like someone from Click rang you because I I mentioned Excel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. My, that's why my phone was going off. Um, okay. We're gonna pause that, and we're gonna run a drawing right now. Completely random. Uh, you can't stack the deck. You only get one entry. And Alexis, I'm not familiar with Alexis. I don't. Does he work at Climber? I don't no, know. he doesn't, doesn't work, work at Climber. All yeah. right, he's a legitimate winner. Congratulations, Alexis. <laughs> uh, we're gonna. I'll screenshot this so we don't forget. And then we'll reach out to you afterwards to get your contact information and get you uh, a gift from Bizlib and or Climber. Nice, congrats. Perfect. We'll come back uh, towards the end again. Um, Vizlib Merchandise Shop. Uh, Martin shared some other link. I'm not going to pull it up, but we do have Sankey shirts apparently. So we'll get them entered in here so people can go uh, get a, a nice Sankey on a shirt. I really want that now, and I don't remember seeing one. So very interesting. <laughs> congrats, Alexis. Uh, perfect. So we'll come, we'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, I guess let's see where we're at. So a couple other questions that I wanted to make sure we cover. Um, actually, like I went through the most of the ones that I had. We got into a couple of things, but did you guys, did you get to a point where, um, I'm curious about this, like when you made the cut over to click sense, how long that took? And did you then find Climber? like months after you had click sense and you're like i need these things from click view because early days that's what climber and vislib were um just everybody was picking it up because we needed to fill some gaps and or did you say you know we already knew we liked climber we were using it and so as soon as we rolled out click sense like that horizontal selector was part of it do you does it go that far back no, when we migrate from ClickView to ClickSense, uh, I know uh, already Vislip from the connections uh, all yeah. in that year. So uh, we know that there was something um, called Vislip. Um, and I think we are um, uh, migrated from ClickView to ClickSense in a couple of weeks. Um, and That's yeah, yeah it's very quick. <laughs> Yeah, it like was, a full cut over. Like we're not yeah. doing cliff you anymore. Yeah, no, wow. just rip it off, uh, the rip the bandit off. Because if you let it go uh, next to each other, uh, yeah, then people still using click view and always complaining about click sense. So we said no, click sense is the solution. Yeah, just use it. And uh, I think really quick after the launch of click sense um, for the data factory internal. We discovered the horizontal selection bar from Climber, and we yeah. going to use it. And this because was still of the, on the click branch, right? At that yeah. time, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah nice. And 
I think two years ago, we switched from the uh, standard VisLib online versions to the VisLib offline uh, version because of the amount of users that are using the, uh, the extensions in the same time at the same moment. Uh, so that's where we also received some support from Climber. Oh, you are gathering some delay um, because of the amount of, of data which was in there. Uh, and they said, okay, then you need to go to the offline uh, uh, option. And so that's why we are able to um, do that amount of data and that amount of apps. Because some some of the data, uh, some of the apps have data in it from SAP. And then you are talking about 10 million or more on rows. And if you have two, three, four, five SAP customers, uh, then you know how much yeah. that will yeah. ask from your first lip uh, and uh, connections. I think that's that's big. I don't often hear of organizations that, like you said, rip the Band-Aid off real fast, just said, we're doing the full cutover. We still today work with um, dozens, if not a, you know, 100 plus organizations that have a very sizable click view deployment yeah. for specific purposes. And it's still an awesome product. I still have it installed on my desktop because yeah. I will. I have old ClickView apps that I like, and I try to replicate them where I can and and move stuff over. But just to say, hey, we're going to standardize on this, and we're going to maybe work differently, but use all these tools that we have at our disposal. Um, one question, yeah, is the horizontal selector bar you mentioned still available? It it is. I yeah, think it I, still I is. But the uh, the only thing that the uh, selection the, bar, right? selection bar is going to be faded out of course because there's going to be a new one or there is a new one already it's the fizzlet toolbar that has way more functionalities and yeah here's the thing yeah i really like more. these ones right of the dates and years in particular yeah. of the region um and then the toolbar you mentioned um yeah, i really like this one that we thing. started to roll out so more customization features, making it look a little bit more like a website. You don't have to go full dark mode, of course. Um, but switches, dials, things, images in there as well. And then this really nice uh, expand, although we made the button enormous. It's kind of like the old click view thing where you'd have a show and hide of yeah. all of the selectors that you wanted, all those filters that you put yeah. on your screen, Jan Wilhelm. Just hide it behind one little button in the toolbar and pop it open, lay it out. Uh, the way that you want, um, because this, I still use this a lot, but this can be very overwhelming. This is very data centric, the one that's built in. Yeah. So don't give them every single field, um, but maybe design it such that they can pick drop downs, they can uh, change the slider, pick a couple months. It's a lot easier to use, I think, than just yeah, here's right. all of the data. So yeah, it's the VisLib toolbar. Selection bar is uh, what horizontal selection bar became. Uh, but it's all part of VisLib self-service, which uh, you know still has elements of Climber uh, in the code. Uh, they still live on the ghosts and things like that, and the team, of course, um, that are working on this. So does the amount of sheets in a ClickSense app still matter when you use the sheet menu? No, I don't think so. No, it's with just, of course, you don't want to have five different tabs with 10 uh, a number of sheets, of course, underneath them. So yeah, if you have 50 sheets, of course, it doesn't really matter, but it could be pretty overwhelming, of course, still. But yeah, it's better to organize with sheet menu. It keeps, you, yeah, it, keeps it way cleaner instead of yeah. selecting indeed the uh, sheet overview and then see 50 sheets. It's, it's not doable, of course. So this is indeed better. So yeah, I would say it's less important now. Do you ever just put a select few uh, sheets in the sheet menu at the top and then allow them to get to the dozens of other ones just through the drop down? Like here's the organization. It's not everything, but it's the main things we want you to work on. And go over here and you can select the rest if there's a really detailed page you need. Like you're you don't have to put everything in there, right? No. We are working with some uh, options. If you have a customer that doesn't have some purchase or sales department, then you can hide the different purchase or sales sheets, but they are still in there. Yeah. And so we have some audit 
uh, well, where they doesn't look to a purchase data, and then we hide it, but the sheets are there because we We're are using there. one uh, a template application. Oh, yeah, of course. And then they, uh, and that's your, your the, thumbs up, the, thumbs down. You were saying, if I caught that, you could only get to the page if you click that button. It wasn't in the top toolbar no, drop down. No. That's uh, I hadn't thought about using it like that. Like they're still there, but we're using the sheet menu to, to intentionally hide sheets that um, might not make sense to show. Like they're still there, they're valuable. Um, and there's not a security reason you're hiding it. It's just that it doesn't make sense to how you're using the data and the application, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, good question, Christian. Um, let's see, I wanna see if we missed any other ones. Jane's been pretty good about throwing these in. Lots of things about the shirts and sand keys. <laughs> um, you know, how is this? Um, I'm curious because we have you on the spot. This is one of the questions I think you guys have even known I was going to ask, and that is, how do you feel about our release schedule? Like, sometimes we were releasing things, and I feel it. I work at BizLib. If I go away on a holiday for a week, I come back, and there is all these new updates to extensions and new things that came out and sometimes a brand new extension like tiles released when I was on a vacation. And I'm like, Oh, I, I kind of wanted to see this get released. I really want to use this. Do you ever get overwhelmed at how fast we release stuff? Or is that, is that okay? Like you like the pace and you guys will take the updates when you need them. Yeah. We are using the offline yeah. option. So, we all we exactly. only update when we want to update so we update first on our test environment and then we'll test the visualization and then update yeah. um yeah. and i think it's really cool to do it in that pace because then you every time you came back from holiday there is a new option or there is a new visualization so uh, i will uh, ask my colleagues uh, now almost daily okay look if if there are some extensions which we can use or try out or whatever, or see the new options that are there. And sometimes you have to look very good to find the new future in some extension or whatever. But I think it's really cool and taking it to the next level uh, for my end user and for my uh, developers. Do you update things out of order? So let's say toolbar gets a great feature and you guys are on an older version, do you just go download the toolbar extension and update it? Or do you say, uh, we're going to take a downtime. Hey, guys, wait three months because we're going to we're going to update everything all at once. Because there's if you have the library, you have self-service, there's um, I should know the number and we change it. We just released two new ones, like 38 plus 40 different things you could update all at once or you could go one by one. Like, do you do you say every three months, every six months, or maybe every click update, every major click release, you're going to update VisLib extensions. Like how often are you doing that? It depends on the kind of extension we are using, because some yeah. of the extensions we are using very highly, and then you want to update only that extension because you want to have a new yeah. option or whatever. And then yeah. I only download that extension, but in some cases, uh, we need to update all the extensions okay. because of the new license or because of yeah. some other other things. And then we always start testing it on a test environment and then deploying it to our production. And that's also one of the things Climber uh, um, takes the lead and sent me an email. Hey, MLM, watch out, your license is to be expiring. So you need to replace all the uh, yeah. extensions otherwise the user is receiving an error okay the license is expired so yeah. um Man wilhelm you're on vacation please come back <laughs> yeah <laughs> everybody's going to be really mad all the pivot yeah. tables won't work yeah. <laughs> so that's why uh, uh why i'm very happy with uh, the cooperation with the uh, the and his team so. they're watching out for you yeah that's yeah. really yeah. cool yeah. we have to yeah. <laughs> no, but I also like the like the schedule and also what I especially like and and of course especially at the beginning of Fislib when uh, Martin uh, started of course then there wasn't a, such a big team as there is right now so you have way less developers so, but also way more bugs of course in the in the data but having yeah to report bugs but also having feature requests 
this goes really fast. So uh, for an example, we had a colleague of mine uh, develop an app on Tuesday where we used the shape menu, but you have the shape menu plus right now. Yes. Uh, and we, you, we saw that with a release, you still had the edit button in the top corner. Ah. It, it couldn't be moved away. So, but we asked for the future and this morning we got the update of, hey, your problem is fixed. Yeah. And now the problem is fixed. So it only took two days. So that's also one thing, both feature requests and bugs can be yeah, communicated really quickly with the Fizzle team. You can just talk to the developers themselves. So and especially us as a reseller, of course, I just schedule a call with them, say, hey, this is not going well. This is the click version that I'm using, or this is the browser that I'm using. And then we can yeah, test fairly quickly and have a solution out maybe even by the end of the week. And yeah. if not, then it's the, it's the next week. And that's also for us. As climate, the reason why we stay connected with Fistlit, because even though maybe not everything is perfect, never, nothing is perfect, of course, but we can handle and get to solutions really quickly. And that's yeah, one thing we really like. And also what our customers like, because if they have requests, we can put them to Fistlit, we can discuss them, see how yeah, eligible they are. And if people really want to use it, if there are more customers, and if so, it could be done in, uh, in days or weeks. And yeah, that's, really that, that's wonderful to hear. Yeah, your experience with that too. And me, as I said, being here, I, I will bring up things sometimes too. Oh, I wish we could do this. What if in tiles, we could edit something this way? And then I hear from the team or I chat with Michael, the PM for it. And he goes, yeah, we, we, it's already there. We're in design. <laughs> it's in this server. Go test it out. We're about to release it next week. I, I just had the idea. How did you guys know? Oh, we heard it from other people. We needed it then. Yeah. So we take a lot of that into consideration really quickly. And um, it'd be great. Yeah, I'm putting you on the spot. But if you have any future requests you guys want, we should uh, we should ask now because now you have a captive audience. I know Martin's watching, yeah. so <laughs> you can push it through maybe. Uh, but also, uh, and, and jokingly, but with, you know, midsummer coming up, I know some people will be taking off time. So it'd be great to get your future requests now and maybe we get it in before before the summer hits. Do you have anything big that you're like, I really wish VizLib would figure this out, whether Ooh. it's a new visualization or some some capability you want in the existing stuff? Ah, we have a lot of customers, of course, also switching to SaaS to click cloud. Yeah. And I know you guys are working on it, but having right back uh, getting in SaaS that uh, I know, I think there's a test version maybe somewhere. I don't have it yet, but uh, but uh, I would really like that because I have a, quite a, a couple of customers that are using ClickCloud and yeah want to use yeah. uh, right back heavily. Yeah, Alexis also <laughs> so wants it as well. Says, That's yeah. right. Uh, it's not it's not in test. It's actually released. It's done. Uh, we have it live. How um, can I not notice? We have documentation <laughs> that just was recently updated, um, so we'll get that out. But yeah, you guys can start putting it in place um, today. There's a few things you have to open up more ports oh, of course, and yeah, white know, yeah. stuff, of course, like there's a bit more configuration to make it work with SAS. Um, but we have the Vizlib Management Council to uh, manage this entire deployment now and it works with SAS. Nice. So, um, oh, that's really good to hear. Yeah, we got it out. That was easy. Now give us one that we have to work on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, know. I see Christian is, uh, is mentioning yeah. one, the multi bar chart. Multi bar chart. That's I different. That's not probably a I do this one. I wonder what you mean by that. I, um, it's probably a dimensional thing, uh, with probably two measures in it, having two dimensions, two measures. I guess I have an watch. idea. I wonder if um, let's see, Christy. I'm going to share my screen and see if I can or Christian. Um, custom report is always where I start too, Jordi. Um, and see if we can do something. And that is, what if we had the amount of sales by channel? That should be a very simple bar chart, right? Uh, change this to a bar. And I want to see this as a trellis. Um, so also by country, we'll add that one in there and hit trellis mode, turn on channel. And is this a multi-bar chart, like uh, small multiples? Is this what you mean, maybe? Or maybe maybe have something else. This is a trellis chart, effectively. Yeah. 
this is built into. Uh, is so I just right click on the one I want and pick um, this little trellis mode. We can see it by more countries if we want it as well. And this is built into, I don't have all the data, but we'd see as many countries as we need to. Quick comparison. So that's small multiples or trellis. Same access to oh, two measures. Yeah, see, that's what I meant, probably. Yeah. yeah, two measures, and then yeah. Mm, I have to come back to that. I've I've attempted stuff with the KPI designer of using overlaid charts, which is exactly my approach would have been in ClickView. Yeah, two bar charts, and then I hide the color of the other one, but the values are where I want, kind of like a combo chart. Um, but I'm overlaying stuff. Good for IBCS. I don't know what that is. I'll have to look that one up. Yeah, um, IBCS is uh, they have a standards for how uh, charts should look like and such. Oh, yeah, that's well, pretty I cool. That. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I need to look that up now. Uh, great. Yeah, th that's a good one. Uh, we can send you to, and Christian will reach out and get you to, you know, send that as an official feature request, and we'll see what we can do with that. Yeah. Any for you, Jan Wilhelm? Uh, no, I was also uh, mentioning the write back function because of a customer of us asked it in, in clicks and SaaS. So, um, for our internal thing, I don't know. I don't know something I'm missing right now. No, you have covered is... like every, every extension and every chart that there is, of course, in, uh, in clicks. So would be kind of hard to, <laughs> to come up with new ones. Yeah, we have to completely, yeah, create new ones. So that's harder, of course. We try. I think the one that uh, I found the most runway lately has been tiles. And that's because you can design stuff that looks like it's in a heavily designed website, like a really visual, beautiful table. It has yeah. some icons and different buttons and lay it out and then stack it across. So I almost wonder um, if there's ways we can use that. We did it like a mortgage rate. Um, yeah, so that's one. as yeah. close to financial I've seen right now. But and yeah, I play around with that a lot. For yeah, I used it two times now. Also for a different customer, they also shoot uh, uh, show their products uh, from different angles. So yeah, for instance, shoes, and then yeah, you could see it at the front, at the sides, and the and the top, and the bottom. So people who yeah need to see what uh, what their stuff is about, they have. Uh, a better overview and that's what we do with tiles and i also created a mortgage like example which uh, fistlip has created and i do like tiles even more when they did the big update where you could live see what you're doing uh, mm, because in the yeah. beginning the editor was a, uh, of course a bit limited but right now with all the new functionalities yeah this is great i duplicate this um and then we start editing this Instead of using the whole property menu, which we yeah. were kind of running out of space, of course, <laughs> um, we started doing this and uh, allowing you to edit things here, move stuff around. You can see it live or you can just see where things are. I want yeah. that speed gauge to be a bit bigger. This should also be uh, in, the, in the KPI designer. It would make yeah, design really the KPI designer yeah. also better. Um, you know, and changing font sizes and all that good stuff. And we want to italicize and make this much larger and, and swap this out for, um, I don't Comic Sans, please don't use that. You can use <laughs> something else. <laughs> why is that there? Yeah, I don't know why it's there. We try to get them to take it out. But yeah, tiles, that is a fun one. Um, and you can build those really beautiful things like, uh, this is where I was trying to find the mortgage rate one that looks like it would be on a website. And it actually was, I think, replicated from something like that. It has a big continue button, has tool tips that pop up, give you more details. Um, so it's a fun one to play with. And you can create some visualizations that I I think you wouldn't even call a visualization. It's just, it's purpose built. I lost my camera somehow, yeah. come back. Yeah, there you are. Um, perfect. And then a uh, question I saw, Gantt chart. Lori wants numbers across the top and set a date. Uh, Luke, if you're listening, I'll, we'll send this one to you. He's the PM for Gantt. And imprinting for SaaS reporting. Well, we don't build imprinting. That's a click thing. Um, but what we are doing and working with them is on making the click automation side. Ooh, it's drawing time. Um, the click automation reporting work with extensions and VizLib so that 
you can build a report. Effectively, you build the entire sheet in a ClickSense app to look like the report page, a PDF, and you use click application automation to generate reports. Yeah. I, I don't know what we're we'll here, of course, at Click World coming up, but I don't think we're going to hear a lot about imprinting. I think we'll hear a lot about reporting and content creation in SaaS directly, and this imprinting yeah. term may fade away at some point. That's a good I question. Think so. We still work with imprinting a lot, so don't get me wrong. It's just SaaS. Uh, <laughs> somebody's ringing me because I mentioned imprinting. <laughs> I didn't. They did. Now, it's for the giveaway. So last uh, last chance here before we wrap up. If you haven't typed in Baker Tilly, try it again just to make sure you're in. You can type it in any of the, if you're on YouTube or LinkedIn. And uh, I'll move back over to the giveaway one in a second here. And we'll refresh that page so that we can uh, give away some, some merchandise from Vizlib. And Climber's going to pack up a nice gift. I'm really interested in... I know you guys, uh, Erica said you guys have a beanie. Yeah, uh, but this one is summer. cooler. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I really like this one. It's, it hasn't been cold enough for me to wear it here, but I'm, I'm not complaining. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, or get a rubber duck for Vizlev. Yeah, we'll load this up with some more stuff, but we'll give you a voucher for the store uh, if you use Baker Tilly in the chat. And then uh, I'm curious to see what the mystery box from Climber will be as well. So I saw one or two more come in. Let's hit this. Yeah. Uh, we'll hit draw again. Alexis was our first winner. So Alexis, uh, you can't win this time again, just in case. And Jason Klein, not congrats. a employee. Climber employee? Nope. Oh, congrats, or Jason. Someone really. <laughs> <laughs> The last time Jane and I ran this, it was, yeah, Vizlib employees won. We had to just keep clicking the button. Um, so it's it's nice to have this work out. Uh, we'll have some fun with this. I had a lot of fun. I think we, we covered a lot of ground here. Um, anything you guys want to mention? Uh, places you want people to learn more about? I know that Climber and Baker Tilly have had a long relationship, right? So there might be blogs, uh, interviews, and different things that we could point people to. Um, but anything you want to share or how, how are you guys going to be watching click world in a few weeks? Are you got plans for that? Probably on a big TV, I guess yeah. here in the office and then uh, full time, some popcorn and then, uh, have some snacks yeah. ready. You miss connections, right? Like that was, there's something to it. It wasn't really about the session so much as actually no, just getting to meet a bunch of people. Just meet people. Yeah. yeah that's too bad, but we'll see you next year. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it to get back in person. And uh, I'm in the U.S., but I would love to come out and visit. And uh, I have never been to the Netherlands, so um, I have a reason to go now. And maybe we have a little meetup or a little event, do a click meetup would be somewhere good. around Baker yeah. to the office. That would be great. Yeah, no problem. You're welcome. And then I'm definitely headed up to Sweden at some point, too. So we'll figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right. Um, Congrats, Jason. Yep, we'll get your information um, and reach out for your contact uh, mailing details and get you something here. So I want to say thanks to everybody. And thank you, uh, Jan Wilhelm, for joining us and Jordi uh, for all your work that you guys are doing at Climber and uh, lots of good ideas shared today. So thank you all. Yeah. I see a little private chat just jump in. Thank you. Oh, it's from Elizabeth. <laughs> so, <laughs> just covering all the bases here and make sure I didn't miss anything. But thank you guys again for joining Happy Hour. Um, oh, yeah. Thank you. thank you, Erica. She shared a link here. Oh, um, cool. Check out climber.eu um, for more details on all the great work you guys do at Climber. And if you need an accountant, check out Baker Tilly. They're everywhere. <laughs> 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 Cheers, guys. Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, take care. Yeah, bye. Yep. We'll talk soon. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.